giant killer murder bees. What are we to do as humans in the face of this great threat? These murder bees are actually better known as the giant Asian hornet, and there was a subspecies you may know of if you've ever been on the internet for long enough, you've seen one of these things, the Japanese giant hornet. These are, in fact, the largest hornets in the world, and they're called murder bees over here, or murder hornets, rather, they're, they're, they're hornets. Uh, they're called murder hornets because they can get pretty nasty. Now, I like insects in general, but some of the stats that this thing boasts it's huge, are pretty impressive. First of all, uh, the largest of these hornets can get about two inches long. If you want a kind of uh, check on how that is, your uh, second digit right in the middle here of your finger is about an inch long. So if you put those back to back, that's a big old bug. So you have a giant creature and they have uh, a lot of armor plating. They are very robust insects. Not only that, they can be incredibly vicious. So they start, they, um, the majority, this is live, the majority of their diet is larger insects. So they will, they will prey on praying mantises, which I find funny, but most notably, and if you've ever seen documentaries on these things, they will destroy honeybees and, uh, honeybee hives. I was going to say decimate, but that means, but that means, uh, reduce by 10%. So, what these things do when a scout goes out and locates a honeybee hive, most famously, one of these things, uh, well, it can call in reinforcements, but one of these things can decapitate around 300 honeybees in a matter of minutes. That's what it does. It, <laughs> it preferentially decapitates these bees and takes the thoraxes back home uh, to feed their young. Giant murder hornets! But that's not to say that uh, you can't evolve some kind of resistance to a threat as existential as murder hornets. Uh, the local honeybees in the area, in Japan, for example, they've evolved a very clever trick. What they do is they will leave when they know a scout is on the way or they sense a scout, they will release a chemical pheromone, a, a, a signal, out to the rest of the hive. And they will say, we're all going to uh, gather around the entrance of the hive, but we're going to leave the entrance open. And so when this scout comes through the hive door, it is quickly swarmed by honeybees. It, and these honeybees create a ball around uh, the hornet. Now, the hornet is still going to kill a lot of these honeybees, but the honeybees would die anyway if they were to sting the hornet. So they create this protective ball around the hornet such that it cannot move or operate very well, and especially so that it can't escape and go bring in reinforcements. Then what the honeybees do is that they start violently vibrating like they would to warm up their own hive when it's cold out. Bees uh, do little butt shakes and it can warm up the hive. But they do this around these giant hornets. And what that does, it raises the internal temperature. And there are really, there's really cool footage, uh, thermal camera footage of this bee ball in action. Uh, but they raise the internal temperature and the internal CO2 con uh, concentrations of this ball to a very specific level. A temperature of 115 degrees exactly, or 46 degrees Celsius. This is enough to cook the giant hornet alive. And as evolution would have it, the honeybees can withstand temperatures of up to 50 degrees C and 102 degrees, uh, 122 degrees Celsius, uh, 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Whoo! It's live. So you've seen they're playing a very dangerous game. A change of only seven degrees would kill the honeybees as well, but they very, uh, they very carefully control the temperature so that it cooks the giant hornets alive. Now, why is it why, why are people making a big stink about this big bug now? Well, it's because, uh, like any other uh, invasive species, they've now made their way to a shore that they're not usually on. And because they're so voracious and so strong, they can wreak havoc in the local populations of other insects. So when we found giant hornets, for example, in uh, Washington, where there is a lot of bee... Um, culturing going on where there's a lot of honey produced the worry is if a lot of these start showing up it could it, they could go on a rampage and not to mention that being stung by one of these things reportedly feels like a hot nail being forced into your body 
<laughs> that doesn't sound good. And they are known for injecting a lot of venom per sting. So uh, I think you c there's an expected mortality if you get 30 or so stings, which is obviously much less than it would be for a honeybee, discounting if you have some kind of anaphylactic reaction to it. If you do, if you're allergic to bees, hornets, uh, bee venom, they share a lot of uh, chemicals getting sucked with st stung with this thing. God, I'm just thinking about it. it makes me, just gets me all. But getting stung by this thing is A, super terrible, and B, possibly deadly. B, you like how I did that? So that is why people in the United States, at least, are currently running to the hills in the face of the giant murder hornet. But uh, unlike a lot of things you'll see people freak out about, these kind of live up to its name. Uh, when people try to remove them from an environment, they will remove whole nests, or because their exoskeletons are so hardy, um, Japanese uh, locals are known to go around with a stick with a flattened end and smack them in their heads until their heads explode. Murder hornets. Coming to an apiary near you? Hopefully not. Hello, and welcome to Office Hours.